Welcome ladies and gentlemen, fellow nerds, um, to my living room. Um, you're looking at a video of cal about calculator link programming and I've made this because I've had several questions from several different people about calculator linking and I thought I'd make a nice video to explain things a bit. Uh, I am Tim Fransen, also known as Timendus online and I've made several link applications, APIs, protocols. Now, what I'd like to start with is the OSI model. The OSI model is the model that the internet uses. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's structured in a very layered way. So that means that we start with a physical layer. That's the cabling, but it can also be the wireless network, for example. That's also a physical layer. And on top of that, there's a data link layer. And a data link layer makes sure that data comes from one end of the connection to the other top of that is a network layer so if we have to route things it makes sure that data gets from there to there through here okay now why am I showing you this I'm showing you this because important about this is to understand that the different layers do not have all that much interaction they were designed independently of each other so that means that the physical layer uh, has absolutely no knowledge of the data link layer and the data link layer has absolutely no knowledge of the network layer. And the other way around, it also goes. So the data, uh, the network layer has absolutely no knowledge about the data link layer, and the data link layer has no knowledge of the physical layer. All they do is their own job, their own small little task, and nothing else. <coughs> now, I want you to keep that in mind. That idea of having different layers doing just one simple thing when we go to calculator networking. So I made this. Uh, and I call it the, the calculator uh, networking uh, um, stack. We start with a physical layer, but this is all in software, of course, so I don't, I'm not really talking about the, the copper here. I'm talking about the bit of software that makes sure that on this copper line we get zeros and ones, bits uh, that can form messages. Now that is the first layer. We have to make sure that we can do this. We can send zeros and ones across a line. If we can do that, we're halfway there. Second layer, the byte layer, makes sure that we can con combine these bits into sensible bytes. This is a very nice byte. Um, then there's a third layer, the data layer, uh, that combines bytes to make strings, blocks, uh, allows you to send double registers, all that kind of stuff. And then there's a fourth layer, the networking layer. I've um, done a few things with that in my CLAP project. Uh, and the fifth layer is the application layer. What are you doing with this calculator linking in your application? How does it fit in? Uh, I'm going to try and make five videos, so this is the first, and I'm talking about the physical layer in this first. And the other four I hope to address in some later videos, no promises though. Okay, so the first part of this is the physical part. <coughs> the physical layer, how to send a bit across a piece of copper, because that's all it is, let's be honest. Um, this is nothing special, it's just wire. So if I put a current on here, say plus five, volts, oh, I can't write with a mouse, um, and you connect this to the ground, that's important, you always have to compare a voltage compared to something, uh, then on this end we also get 5 volts, and we also get a ground, right? Because it's just a copper wire, it's nothing special, nothing important. There are link cables with uh, a thing in jig here in between, I don't know what they do, but they look very impressive, but I don't believe they do anything. Still, it's just copper that allows current to flow. So we have a naming convention here. Um, the, the tip is called the tip, the piece in the middle is called the ring, and then the piece on the bottom is called the base. Um, as I said, <coughs> we have to compare voltages to something, and that something is the base. The base is always the ground. So this is the ground. Let's draw it in the proper way. And plus 5 volt is relative to ground. So on the tip there's 5 volts, on the ring there's 5 volts. You can try this. If you take a calculator, you plug in a cable, you take a voltmeter, you connect the voltmeter one end to the ground and the other to the tip or the ring, you'll measure about 5 volts, 4.8 depending on your batteries. Um, you can change that. 
You can change it in two ways. First is in hardware, second is in software. <coughs> Again, you can test this. If you plug a cable in your calculator, you connect the ground to the tip with a piece of wire, your calculator will freeze because it will go into uh, side link mode. Now, uh, this sheet shows you this process. If you pull a, uh, uh, one of the lines low, as it's called, what you do is you connect them to the ground and current will start to flow from the tip, in this case, to the ground. Now you can use that current to, for example, light an LED. Uh, so uh, what you could do is make a very primitive disco light from your calculator by turning on and off the different uh, um, lines. You could blink LEDs. It's not very difficult to do. Um, you can also do it in software, as I said. In software, it's a, a bit more uh, a bit more difficult, perhaps, depending on how good you are with assembly. Um, first, you load some value in a re register. I'll get to the values in a minute, and you send that value out port zero. Now you've probably all seen this somewhere around on the internet. Uh, the difficult part lies in two things. One is the values that you send out because uh, there's been some um, misunderstandings about that. And the second part is how you use it for something useful. I mean, it's good and all to be able to, to set uh, a bit, uh, to set a line low, but how are you going to use it? That's what I'm going to get to, <coughs> but not in this video. So if you do this, you set uh, you uh, uh, save one in register A and then you send out one through port zero. What happens is that the tip will be connected to the ground by the calculator making it read ground. So again you can do this. To calculator, plug in a cable, check your voltmeter, you'll see the ground drop if, uh, as soon as you do this. Now make sure you don't call uh, a get key press or something because if you run a Texas Instruments operating system routine it will reset the lines to high high. So, uh, And also this is only for 83 plus, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay now I'd like to take this concept one step further and take two calculators into account. So one calculator we have here on the left, this is calculator A, A, and this is calculator B. Calculator A is doing what I just showed you. It's um, pulling low the tip. So it's putting one in A, register A, and then sending it out port zero. What it does is basically this. It connects the tip to the base, so to speak. So on the other end, on, in calculator B, we can read this. We can detect that this happened. And we do that uh, by, I'm sorry, I'm skipping a slide. I'll get back to that. Well, we do this, this by reading from port 0 into register A some value and then that value says something about the port and we can check the bits of that value now bit 0 is the rightmost bit for the viewer rightmost bit um, and it checks that to see if the tip has been pulled low it's still high if it's uh, I gotta say this right if it's set then the tip has been pulled low and if the bit is reset then the tip is still high. <coughs> okay now onto the part that I just skipped. If you do this, if you pull the tip low on one calculator, what will happen in the other calculator is it will seem as if this happened externally. Because internally it does this to the tip, that's connected by copper wires, and then the calculator does this to the base, and the base goes back to here. So this is connected. Right, so that's how it works in hardware. Um, it's very, very simple. Current will start to flow from tip to base because the other calculator makes it so. So that's how it works. Um, now you have four options, obviously. You can pull the tip low and leave the ring high. You can pull the ring low and leave the tip high. You can pull both low or you can pull neither low. And pulling neither low or keeping them both high that is the default that's the what the <coughs> that is what the Texas Instruments operating system does that's what all the uh, ROM calls will reset to and that's what we keep as the default um, now you're probably interested in which bits to set which values to write that's what this table tells you 
Um, if you want to read, let's start with reading. That's the easiest. Uh, if you want to read the tip, for example, for in a Texas Instruments 82 calculator, you read bid zero. I see I've been telling you the wrong way around, sorry. A reset bit means that the line is being pulled low, a set bit means it's high. <coughs> but on the writing part, it's exactly the other way around. So that's very, very um, difficult to remember. Sorry about it for that. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that different calculated models have the hardware mapped to different uh, pins on the hardware. So that means that if you read on an 82, the value of the tip, you have to read bit 0, but on 83 it's bit 2, and the ring is 1 versus 3, and on 83 plus it's 1 again. It's very, very confusing. Now, writing data to the pool is also very confusing, because um, there are 8 bits involved, and only 2 are really interesting. And the other, eight, uh, the other 6 bits you have to leave in place. You, you don't want to mess with them, because sometimes they can screw up things. Not always, but sometimes. So on an 83 plus it's real easy. Yeah, just take the value 0, all bits reset, and to write, uh, just to pull the tip line low, you just set bit 0. To pull the ring line low, you just set bit 1. And that's real simple. On an 83, it's a bit more difficult because you have to take this as a base value. You have to leave a few bits set. And then on that value of hexadecimal D0, you set bits 0 and 1. And on 82, you take C0 hexadecimal and you set bits 2 and 3. And if you set the proper bits and you write it out to the port 0, the magic will happen. All right. Um, I'd like to take you now to this emulator to get a bit of a feel for how it really works, how it operates in the hardware. Of course it's an emulator, but this emulator is very accurate. Um, I know the guy, not personally, but I kind of know the guy who built it, and it really rocks. They've been really putting a lot of effort into getting the hardware to work as realistic as possible. So when I said, please implement multi-calculator linking into this calculator, they said, okay, but how does it work? So I figured it out, told them, and they implemented it, and it's awesome. It's really working. So I can plug in calculators here, plug in the first, plug in the second, plug in the third. I'm plugging in three calculators. This is <laughs> important. Now, what this application does is nothing more than what I just told you. It can set the bits on port zero so it writes out the data. Uh, so it, it leaves a, a line high or it pulls it low. That's all it does. Um, the application on this end, and also here, <coughs> that reads those bits that I just showed you. So uh, it reads whether it's been kept high or pulled low. So I can use this application to pull a line low, and as you can see, all other calculators will read it as being pulled low, including my own. Now, I can put the other line low, or I can pull them both low, or I can leave them both high. So I hope this is this will give you a bit of a feeling uh, for how this works. Now, you can do this with two calculators, but you can also do it with three or four or five or ten, and that's where the networking layer comes in. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a later video. So. I'd like to finish with a few references. Um, if you go to this address on TACOG.org, Texas Instruments Calculator.org, uh, you can find uh, a tutorial I wrote in 2003 about linking. Uh, and it covers all these basics, pretty much all I'm telling you now, plus a bit more. Uh, and it also contains the little program that I just just showed you. Um, it's a bit old, a bit old date, a bit outdated, but it's still correct for. Texas Instruments 83, that is. And uh, this link is a link to the emulator that I just showed you. Uh, it's a really good emulator. It's a bit hard to use, but once you get the hang of it, it really, really helps you in calculator programming uh, for networking related stuff, especially, and also linking. Um, so that's it.
I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Um, I'm hoping I'll make four more. Who knows? Um, see you in the next one. Thank you.